every filmmaker should watch Basket Case before they make a single fucking movie. <laughs> That's and right. See how they did it on such a low budget and did it right. Hello and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies, but before we get started, what are we drinking today? Uh, we're drinking a beer from a semi-local brewery, Channel Marker Lager. From Lake of the Woods Brewery. Today we're going to be talking about 1982's Basket Case. <laughs> this movie is like perfection. <laughs> yeah. The movie was directed by the man Frank Hennenlauter. He did Frankenhooker. Hey, Spike! <laughs> <laughs> we covered that one. Click the link above. And he did brain damage too. Oh, it feels like you got a real monster down there. <laughs> we did that one as well. Kevin Van Henterick is in Basket Case. And he didn't really do much else. He just played the same character in <laughs> Basket Case 1, 2, and 3. And he was also in uh, Brain Damage, too. He had a little cameo on the subway. As this character from Basket Case. <laughs> yeah, with Bill Isle, yeah. too. <laughs> so Basket Case starts off when we see this doctor leaving his house at night. Here's something kind of rustling around in the trees. and He's really shitting a brick, Yeah, too. and he gets pretty scared. And he runs back into the house. You see this hand kind of... <laughs> switch off the fuse box, this weird deformed hand. The doctor sees like shadow of things moving around. He gets super freaked out and pulls out this gun and just starts shooting. Yeah, you hear that breathing yeah. too? Uh, uh. And then we see this hand come up and grab the doctor's face and start clawing the shit out of him. We then see Dwayne holding this wicker basket coming to New York and wandering the streets and he's trying to find a hotel to check in at. Of course he checks into some seedy hotel. <laughs> the clerk, of course, has got like a wife beater on with suspenders. Yeah. And, uh, Idiots hanging around in the lobby too. <laughs> They're all drinking and pissing around. He goes to go pay for the hotel and he pulls out this big wad of cash and everyone's like, what the hell? And also wondering what's in this basket. He gets to his room and opens up the basket and starts feeding whatever's in there all these hamburgers. <laughs> then Dwayne starts looking through all these papers and then looking at names in the phone book. Then he shows up at Sarah Connor's house. <laughs> Sarah Connor. Dwayne goes to this Dr. Needleman's office. Of course it's Needleman. Yeah. <laughs> Starts chatting to the receptionist, Sharon, and they start getting pretty chummy. She's hitting on him. She's buddy. hitting on him. It's the hair. <laughs> it must be. It's the yeah. long locks. Yeah. He finally gets in to see Dr. Needleman, and he's some bum. <laughs> he's all stuffing his fucking <laughs> yap. His office is a fucking mess. It's like, who would go to this guy? Put down that thing you're holding. Tell me what's wrong with you. He's like, well, I got this pain in my chest. He's like, well, take off your shirt. He takes off his shirt and reveals this big scar on the side of his body. Then later in the evening it shows this Dr. Needleman calling this other doctor, warning her saying, well, Dwayne was here. Yeah. And also, this other doctor, Dr. Liftlander, has been killed. Shit. She doesn't give a shit, she just brushes him off. So we know that somehow these doctors are all connected. That same night, Dwayne comes back to the doctor's office with that basket. You just see him kind of like tip it over and whatever's in there comes out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then goes to the doctor's office and kills that stupid Dr. <laughs> Needleman. <laughs> yeah. Finally get a glimpse of what this thing is after it just tears Dr. Needleman to shreds. Goddamn ribbons! You kind of see him for a brief second before he goes into the shadows. It's this weird creature thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So Lucky Dwayne gets to go on a date with Sharon. Whatever's in that basket, <laughs> he gets him a TV to keep him company while he's away. He puts the TV down and turns it on. Then you see this arm come out and grab the knob and the knob comes off. Yeah, so he can't change the channel. He's stuck watching that static or whatever. <laughs> on his date and um, they're hitting it off and they kind of start kissing. Whatever comes out of this basket, just starts to fucking lose it. And he's like throwing the TV around, throwing shit onto the TV. He's all walking around the, the room and shit going nuts. The people in the fucking hotel are wondering like, what the fuck is going on? It sounds like a wild animal is loose in the room. 
that shitty clerk guy in the front he all lifts that yeah. swinging counter and him and his buddies there they go upstairs like what the fuck everybody's crowding around and they go into the room and they see it is turned upside down one of the guys sees a wad of cash on the floor and like the landlord guy's like all right everybody out get to your own rooms get the hell out of here guy comes back to the room and he goes to snatch the money but his curiosity gets the better of him and he opens the lid and ah, this thing <laughs> lunges right at his face clamps on and he starts going around the room and he just kind of goes back into his own apartment <laughs> they go to the guy's room and it's just a bloodbath <laughs> we then see Dwayne and one of the tenants Casey drinking at this local bar Dwayne starts to tell her what is in the basket and his whole story, right? I guess he got drunk enough, we started to loosen his tongue <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Yeah, and she, even Casey, she's like, it's not so funny anymore, Dwayne. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out that Dwayne and his brother Belial are conjoined twins, and they actually killed their mother during childbirth, and the dad is like, he's upset, but he doesn't want them to survive. They're like, this is an abomination, it's a creature, you know, he just wants to let them die. But their aunt actually kind of pushes for them to live, track down doctors to try and separate them because one is not so normal, let's yeah. just say. Hunting down like these seedy back lane kind of yeah. fucking black market doctors do the operation. When they're doing it, you hear all those squishing sounds. <laughs> All this cutting and everything. What they do with poor Belial, they just throw him in the garbage. They wrap him in a bag and just toss him out. Dwayne and Belial have a psychic link. Dwayne gets up and actually finds Belial outside. And he picks him up and he nurses him back to health. And then the ant kind of takes them under her wing. So now Dwayne and Belial are out for revenge. Basically getting back at the doctors who separated them. And that's where we're going to end the plot. So if you want to see what happens with the cast and characters of this movie, keep watching 1982's Basket Case. Didn't you used to have Basket Case on VHS? Yeah, but I was jumped for it the day I bought it from the flea market. You remember? Yeah, vaguely. I can't believe we found Basket Case at that flea market, Justin. Justin? What the hell do you think you're doing? Heading home after VHS hunting. Heading to Winnipeg. Winnipeg? You ain't never gonna get to Winnipeg. Well, why not? This path don't go anywhere near Winnipeg. You done taking a wrong turn. Well, if excuse me, gentlemen, I got quite the journey ahead of me. Hold it. You ain't going no damn where. Hold this tape all over these damn woods. Now listen, uh, what is it that you uh, require of me? We require that you get your goddamn ass up in them woods. Now just hold on a minute. Okay, all right. Be careful about that weapon you have in your hand there. Shut up. Now let's see you just open that tape. The plastic? Just take it right off. That clamshell, take him off. Get that power on. Load, boy. Let's hear you load. You can do better than that. Load it, boy. <laughs> load. Come on, boy! Come on! Load it! Load it! <laughs> what are we gonna do with him? You're gonna do some rewinding for me, boy. And you're gonna rewind it good. So the first thing we have to say about Basket Case is for a low budget, B, slightly campy horror movie, 
It is amazing. <laughs> it's yeah. like better than most fucking like big budget Hollywood films. Yeah, that are like twice as long. As far as like nailing all the essentials. Every filmmaker should watch Basket Case before they make a single fucking movie. <laughs> That's and right. See how they did it on such a low budget and did it right. Yeah. And it's very typical of a lot of Frank Henenlotter's movies where it's concise and to the point, really nails everything in an hour and a half. Belial, the monster himself, yeah. he is not creepy. He is fucking scary in this movie. Yeah. And for the kind of movie that it is, it's like this low budget sort of comedy horror. Yeah. He is scary. The sounds that he makes too when he when he's freaking out. Half of it is the sound. Oh you know? yeah. 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 And the look, his black eyes and he's all gray. Yeah. And his fucking teeth and CGI could never come close to duplicating that. No. No. Like if this movie was done with CGI it would not be scary. No. It would be kind of a little on the goofy side, I think. Because because the fact that Blyl is real, it's mm -hmm. a real thing that's there with the actors on film, makes it scary. This yeah. thing, you can fucking touch it. It's just a stupid puppet. You know, as silly as, silly as Blyl looks, he's just as scary. <laughs> yeah. Say what you will about the way they used to do things in the old days, but the stop motion animation in this is great. And he's just a little puppet. Yeah, the simplicity of that, yeah. the simplicity of just having a puppet makes it work so much better. Like just for example, like when Blyle attacks somebody, you, they just put this thing on the person and they run around. Yeah, they sort of hold it on, it's right? It's that simple, but it's also 10 times more effective than shitty CGI. Yeah. Yeah, CGI just looks like CGI. Doesn't resonate in your mind. No. These types of effects don't get dated. Yeah. They kind of stand the test of time. Blyle stands the test of time. I think it's great that Frank Henenlotter, in his stupid low budget horror comedy, kind of created like a classic movie monster. Like, That's right. Blyle's yeah. fucking classic, man. <laughs> yeah. The characters, all the supporting cast around Dwayne and Blyle, are amazing in this movie, feed this whole movie. Yeah. And they, they feed the comedic aspect of it too, right? Because everything is drawn from them. Dwayne himself is actually really good. Normal brother, yeah, I guess he's like, you could he's, say. he's like one of the more normal characters in this movie, which is kind of funny, you mm -hmm. know? Everyone's kind of got these weird quirks and pretty outlandish characters. And he's like the normal person. <laughs> yeah. All the doctors are really memorable, have their quirks. Their the, names. Their too. names are memorable. It's all very smart stuff. Yeah. It's all very smart, intelligent, witty writing. Yeah, and the comedy is all intelligent and witty and in the right places. Yeah, it doesn't and, get in the way of right. anything. Right? And intentional. It's the, When the humor's there, it's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to, like, you're laughing at it because it's bad. Mm -hmm. No, you're not laughing at it because it's tacky. You're laughing at it because they made a smart joke. That's right. You know? The pacing, the suspense, and the structure of this movie is kind of what makes it perfection in my eyes because mm -hmm. it's structured and paced perfectly. Yeah. Like, you have the flashback. That could have easily been put in the beginning of the movie. But no, they put it in the middle, which is the perfect place to put it because that builds suspense. For, yeah, for what Belial is. Like you said, they, you don't see him for most of the movie. You just see this hand in the basket. Mm -hmm. You see shadows. And the way that they tease you throughout the movie as to what the fuck is in this basket is yeah. perfect. <laughs> and then when he tells a story, again, it's at the perfect place. You're never bored with this movie either, oh. right? It, it And it does have its ups and downs, but when it goes up, it's like the horror and the suspense atmosphere right. of it. Yeah. When it comes back down, it's the character building, and you get to know more about Dwayne and the supporting cast, and the, yeah. also like the, kind of the little world around, yeah. too, right? Yeah, and yeah, and that's what exactly, like you said, the world building in this movie is great. Yeah. It does kind of, even though it takes place in this huge city, mm -hmm. New York, it feels like it's a much smaller thing, because it's all kind of mostly in the hotel. That's right, yeah. It kind of really feels like it's... It's a little small town, <laughs> yeah. even though it's in New York. It's, it's it's actually really smart how he did that. Yeah, The hotel is a great setting. It is. All the settings in this movie are great because they're all seedy and fucking dirty. The doctor's office is like 
be like, who would go there? Who'd want to go to this place? Typical Frank Hannon Lauder, he loves his disgusting seedy settings. These types of settings lend themselves to low budget horror so well. It just suits the whole look of it. Yeah. The dark look, that film grainy, low budget look, and CD settings is like a marriage made in heaven. It's a lot of tight shots in this movie too. So you get more of an intimate feeling mm -hmm. with the cast and characters, yeah. right? And maybe that makes it a lot more relatable too. And even the other settings, like the flashback, it looks like that Dwayne and Blyle were brought up in this like kind of a rich house. Even that seems dark and kind of disturbing because it's always dark and shadowy and you only see what he wants you to see too right, right? Yeah. he's not showing any extra shots yeah. or huge shots of the mansion and stuff yeah. no he just follows the characters along yeah the way it's lit too is very much like that it's mm -hmm. lit so you only see what the director wants you to see everything else is just black uh, the sound design for this movie is awesome it goes hand in hand with the visuals right all of the sounds that Belial makes but not just that, it's all, <laughs> of, <laughs> it's all of the surrounding shit too, like you hear the basket creaking a lot, yeah. you hear a lot of footsteps, you hear the breathing of oh, Belial, yeah. you hear the surgery, the, all the squishing yeah. and the crunching and... And all the outside sounds too of the city and mm -hmm. stuff like that really helps suck you into this world that, that Frank Hanelotter has built for us. This, and the subject matter in this movie, you know, for a silly, campy horror comedy, says a lot. I mean, Frank yeah. Hanelotter has a lot to say in his movies, you could tell. A lot of his movies, this movie, uh, Brain Damage, uh, Frankenhooker, they all kind of deal with this codependency people have, you know? This one, it's Blyle and Dwayne kind of can't live without each other. Yeah. In Brain Damage, it's Elmer and whatever his host is, you know, this <laughs> codependency. Frankenhooker, he needs to build himself a wife because he needs that companionship. It's always about companionship and relying on somebody else and then having to lose that person. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, in, in this case, it's like a lot to do with like family. As much as he loves his brother and wants to be with him and help him, it's also ruining his life. Yeah. You know, it's ruining his love life. He can't be with his girlfriend because Blyle's jealous. That happens a lot, like people get so obsessed with their family and need to make their family happy, but then they're miserable, Yeah, you know? Yeah. I think it has a lot to do with that. Yeah, you ruin your own life trying to make somebody else happy. Yeah, and that's kinda, I think, what this movie is about. You do feel a lot for Belial. He's the killer in this movie, but you kinda know why. Yeah. And so you can, you can really sympathize with their direction. Yeah, he was thrown in the fucking garbage. Yeah. Like, no wonder yeah. he's pissed off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then Dwayne, obviously, with the psychic link, yeah. they care about each other. And the ending for this movie is, like, kind of sad and tragic. You're yeah. kind of like, oh, man, like, it's almost like a Shakespearean tragedy the way it ends. Like, that's how good this movie is. Mm -hmm. It's tragic, but it's fitting. When their mission is done, where else did they go from here, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I don't think there's anywhere else. So if you haven't seen Basket Case, like, put it in the top of your fucking list. Because it is like the perfect low-budget horror movie. It does everything perfect. And it's extremely effective. So until next time, keep drinking. <laughs>